Now that Blender 4.1 is out, I thought I'd go back and update my render settings guide so that we can get the best renders without any compromises in the quality. Before we get started, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreon members. Without your support, I don't know if I could provide free content here on YouTube, so I really do appreciate it. Also, with this video, we're going to be using a file from my Patreon, and so link is down below if you want to go uh, view that. It'll be free for my full access and artist tiers, and so if you want to join, a link is down below. Okay, so let's hop inside of Blender. So the first thing I wanna talk about is how to optimize a scene. Before we touch any of these settings over here, we wanna make sure our scene is as optimized as possible. You can see I have a little bit more information up here. And so in order to enable that, we can come and turn on this statistics mode over here. And what that allows us to do is see the amount of objects and more importantly, the faces and triangles of a scene. Now those are very important numbers because the higher the count is, uh, the longer the render time is gonna be. Now Blender is a free program and it's one of those programs that honestly really struggles on higher face counts. Uh, honestly, I find anything above a 2 million face count, uh, even on really high end computers, uh, do tend to introduce a lot more render time. And so if we can get that number as low as possible without uh, compromising the scene quality, that is the ideal uh, kind of method to get our render time down. So first thing, uh, there are a couple things that we can do to optimize the scene. So first of all, is uh, just being smart with the amount of assets that you use. Uh, you know, for example, in this scene, I believe I had some like fully edge assets and they had like uh, some crazy amount of uh, polygons and everything. And what I actually ended up doing is going into the modifier tab and there's a great modifier called decimate. And so decimate, uh, if I click that, it basically tries to collapse, unsubdivide or uh, just does a planar calculation and you can change this ratio down. And so if I push it down, you can see our object isn't really changing that much over here. So this is before and then this is after. Uh, and so this is a number that you kind of want to play around with a little bit. Uh, but say we get a, a result like that, uh, you can either apply up here or I believe it should uh, not need to be applied if uh, I might be wrong on that. But uh, as you can see, we have a lot less faces up here right now. So if I uh, disable it, you can see we're sitting at basically uh, 53,000. Uh, faces but now if i enable it it's only at 3000 so that's just one of the ways uh, we can kind of optimize that there the other way is knowing uh, when to duplicate versus when to create an instance and so for example back here we have uh, two sets of mountains and these mountains are actually instance and so uh, typically what you want to do is shift d to duplicate objects you can see uh, since we did do a duplication we have our new mountain over here which we can place wherever we want but now we have a crazy amount of new faces into our scene and so that's not what we want to do uh, for any objects that are going to kind of remain the same over uh, you know multiple different objects we want to actually create what's called an instance and so the shortcut for that is alt d and that will duplicate the object again but now it's actually not creating new geometry data uh, the only caveat to this is now uh, all of this data is going to be transferred uh, between the different objects whereas if you duplicate an object it'll have its own kind of data assigned to it so to uh, demonstrate that i'll just come to edit mode and if i I kind of select uh, some parts of the mountain. You can see now it's uh, basically doing it for all of the mountain objects I have in my scene that I have instance. And so uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, but if you can get away with it, it's a great way to save on some uh, render time and some polygon counts up here. So uh, those are just some very simple ways to uh, kind of optimize a scene. Some more ways would be like particle systems uh, using geometry nodes. I know uh, saves a ton of render time. And so maybe experiment around with some of those. Uh, but now I think we're ready to go ahead and dive into some of the more important settings to actually set up uh, to get some faster render times. So the first thing that we always want to do is we want to be rendering on our GPU. And so I'm just changing GPU compute on over here. And so uh, if your computer has a dedicated graphics card, which most uh, should at this point, uh, even if you're using a gaming laptop, most of them have dedicated graphing, uh, graphics cards now. And so the reason we want to be doing that is because graphics cards handle 3D processes much better than your CPU. And so you can see mine is grayed out over here. And that's actually because we don't have the uh, Blender settings set up correctly to actually render with our GPU. What we have to do now is let's come over to the edit. We'll go to preferences and in the system tab, you can see this cycles render devices is set to none. Uh, now this is dependent on what graphics card you actually have. So maybe do a little bit of experimenting. Uh, if you have a Nvidia RTX card, so I believe that's a 2060 or better, uh, you can actually select this optics. And so that's gonna be the best for any RTX card. You can see uh, I have an RTX uh, 3090 Ti and so optics is gonna be the best for me. Uh, if you don't have an RTX card, say you have an AMD product, 
maybe play around with CUDA or one of these other ones. I think CUDA is going to be what you're probably going to stick to. Anyways, uh, with optics, you want to make sure you only have your GPU uh, selected. If you have your CPU selected as well, it's going to kind of divide the task between the two. And remember, the CPU is a little bit slower. And so we only want to push everything to our GPU. And so that is the main kind of button to select here. And now you can see we actually have this ungrayed out. Uh, so that is probably going to be the biggest kind of time saving uh, for settings that we can do. Uh, honestly, you should be uh, rendering with a GPU regardless of what you do inside of Blender. So yeah, so that is the big thing. Let's go ahead and talk about the sample counts. So this is really dependent on your scene, the lighting of your scene, a lot of different factors. Uh, first of all, I want to come out to the render view just to view everything. Uh, so yeah, so you can see we have this. If I kind of move around the screen, you can see all of that kind of updating and noise. Uh, it looks very grainy. And so that is what uh, sample counts are. Sample is basically just uh, how grainy your footage is going to be. So the higher the sample count means that the less grainy it's going to be. However, However, the more time it's actually going to take to render. And so uh, we used to just uh, have to set this up to a crazy number, uh, you know, 4,000 plus in order to get out all of that noise. However, nowadays we have a very easy denoising method inside of Blender. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn those both on for the viewport and the uh, render. Now, what I like to do for my viewport is if we come to this denoise section, I like to, instead of putting it to automatic, since I do have a RTX card, I'm going to set it to optics. And the reason I'm doing optics on the viewport only is because optics is uh, technically inferior to the other option of denoising. However, again, for our viewport, we don't really care about the quality as long as it's giving us a pretty clean image down here. That's all I really care about. So on the topic of denoising, you can see uh, now all of the grain is gone. However, if you are doing any animation or anything where the camera is moving, then you want to uh, watch out about denoising because it can introduce some artifacts and some potentially wonky things with animation. And so uh, what I like to do for my render will come to denoise. And now with Blender 4.0, we actually have a new feature called uh, use uh, GPU down here. I know before uh, open AI use the CPU and it was super, super slow to denoise. I think the denoise process almost took me as long as uh, actually rendering out the final image. And so uh, using the GPU speeds up that time a lot to where I actually use uh, denoising a lot more in my workflow now. And so that is a great kind of quality of life feature. Uh, of course, we do have some different settings we can set here. The sample count is going to be that uh, kind of amount of grain that we want. Now, in my personal opinion, uh, for the viewport, I just set it to a 128. Uh, 128 is perfectly fine. You can see it gives us pretty good results. Again, in the viewport, I only care about really seeing my environment uh, and getting the creative decisions as much as possible. So I can really zoom in here and I can uh, tell, you know, within reason what the final render is going to look like. So uh, in the render settings now, let's come uh, down here. You can see we have this sample count. Now, typically what I'll do is I'll just stick to 1024 or above. Uh, the You want it as high as you can possibly do. Uh, so this really is the debate of, you know, how much time do you actually have to render out uh, your actual animation? And so for me, I don't uh, typically for clients, I don't go below uh, this number. However, if uh, you do uh, have a lower end, uh, you know, computer or anything and need to push a little bit more time, I do find uh, a 256 is a pretty decent uh, number to stick with for rendering because, again, we are denoising everything. Uh, this might be pushing a little bit into the range where we might start to see some flickering or some artifacting and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, if you want kind of my personal opinion, uh, I don't believe you should stick anything below a 512. And so, uh, you know, test around with your own machine and get a kind of result that you want. Uh, the next thing and, you know, something I feel like a lot of people skip over is this noise threshold. And so this really depends, in my opinion, on the lighting of your scene. If you have a lot of darker areas in your scene, so a lot of shadow areas so like right here and stuff like that, uh, this is really where that number starts to shine. And so you don't want to go too far away from this number. Uh, basically, the lower the number is, the more accurate it's going to be. And so the higher the number is, the less accurate is it's going to be. But again, it's going to uh, decrease the render time. And so typically for me, what I will do in a 
scene like this where it's very sunlit there's not a lot of dark areas uh, besides like this area over here i might multiply this by two and so you can see a 0 0.02 is the number i'll stick with i don't like going anything above this uh you know sometimes if i'm really crunching on time i'll maybe go to a 0 0.04 but again that's where we start to get into the artifacty uh you know nature of animation and stuff like that so again uh typically i stick to a uh you know 0 0.02 for my noise threshold here uh vice versa we can also come up here to the viewport we can come up here and i'm uh you know i want to decrease this so i'll uh, multiply it by four and so now we have a 0.4 uh, noise threshold and again uh, you might be able to see a little bit down here again you really see most of this during motion instead of anything else but yeah you can see uh, we're getting less accurate uh, technically but it is auto updating much much faster and so those are kind of the numbers I like to stick to here of course if you are having some difficulty maybe some frames render in 10 seconds maybe some frames render in 30 seconds uh, that's where you can also set the time limit down here so say I want my render to only render 20 seconds and then if it goes uh, anywhere past 20 seconds it'll just stop at that sample count and so say i want to do like 20 seconds right there that's really a last ditch effort for me uh so typically i'll just leave it on the default zero and so uh that just means uh, whenever this sample count is reached that is when it will end uh, so yeah so those are uh sampling and uh, you know my expl explanations for those and some watch outs you want to do there so some final kind of more advanced level things uh coming down to this light pass section this is basically the amount of light bounces in your scene and so without getting too complicated into it you just want to play around with some of these numbers uh, just to you know see uh, the lowest number that you can set it to without actually affecting the quality now, again you do want to be very very careful here like if I set it down we'll set it down to like one on all these uh, just so you can see uh, so now yeah you can see uh, some lighting of our actual trees and everything may not look uh, as accurate as they did before so you do want to kind of remain very cautious again this is more of the last ditch effort territory that you just need need to uh squeeze you know a couple more seconds out of your render time so i'm just going to go ahead and reset everything again this is where you're going to have to play around it with it for your own scene uh, and just play around with some of those values there the final things i want to talk about uh we have these caustics down here now caustics uh, you can think as basically just light going through uh, anything that's reflective or transparent uh, it'll actually warp the light in specific ways uh, most famous example is like in a pool if, if light is coming through a pool you'll look at the bottom and there'll be all those wavy kind of um, light patterns on the uh, bottom of the uh, pool now those things are very very taxing for a 3d renderer to actually uh, render out and so if you don't have a lot of reflections in your scene like if i'm coming down here uh, i really only have a lot of reflection in the water so i might be able to uh, disable both the reflective and ref uh, refractive caustics and now i can't really see a visual difference uh, however it's giving us much uh, much faster render times and so that's a very cool thing uh, you know again just watch out if you do have a lot of ref reflections in your scene uh, so some final things uh, this fast gi approximation uh, this will basically allow blender to approximate the global illumination which is all of the lights in your scene and so again you want to be very very careful around here i mostly just stick uh, if you bump these numbers up uh, i mostly just stick to three and above you don't want to uh, really go any under three uh, the thing i do here just to kind of double check anything is i'll just turn this off and on and you want to make sure you don't see any visual changes i know it's kind of a weird method but uh, you can see i'm not seeing any visual changes up here uh, however it's just making that a little bit faster okay so some final things i want to call attention to we have the simplify section over here you can turn this on and this is where you can mess around with the max subdivision for both the render and the viewport uh, the child particles if you have uh, i know if you're uh, heavily texturing a uh, scene you might want to limit the texture size uh, to something like 1024 or something like that that might uh, help uh, load in the information a little bit faster when you're rendering uh, and then of course you're always going to want motion blur in my opinion uh, even if you're doing a still uh, image uh, you know you might have some leaves blowing in the wind that you might want some motion blur and stuff in uh, so motion blur i typically always have on that's really kind of up to you and the final thing that i want to call attention to the kind of final uh way we can push this uh as you know much as we can is you want to uh, maybe play around with this used tiling uh so before in the before times uh, when we were in blender we had what's called tiles and so tiles is basically blender will uh, take different 
sections of the render and render that all at once. And then once that section is rendered, it'll go on to the next. And so uh, with Blender, I believe uh, 4.0, we actually had it to where it uh, did this method right now, which uh, has a tile size of bigger than 1080p. And so if you actually come over here, so it's at uh, 2048. If we come over to the resolution, uh, we can see that our uh, max resolution is actually a little bit over that. And so just barely over that right now. So technically, uh, the tile is actually larger than the frame right now. So it's actually just going to render the full frame uh, as uh, at once. Say if we actually had a bigger resolution. So I'll just for now, just multiply both these numbers by two. Uh, you can now see we have a bigger number than that. So now Blender is going to take basically half of this frame and then render that out. And it's going to uh, once that is done rendering, it's going to take the other half of the frame. Now, this is really uh, comes down to your render time. You might want to do some test renders. Uh, but typically, uh, you know, sometimes if you change this number off, so use tiling off, uh, basically that'll just tell Blender, hey, just render the entire image uh, flat. Don't, you know, have any tiles or anything. Just render it all at once. And sometimes in very kind of uh, specific use case scenarios, I've actually found that that does increase uh, or sorry, decrease the render time ever so slightly. And so that might be a little bit of playing around with it. Uh, but yeah, so just remember this use tiling button, just uh, kind of test around with it. So yeah, so that's pretty much everything I wanted to discuss about uh, optimizing and rendering. Let's get a fast render out. So, uh, you know, right now I'm in the uh, rendered view. Let's actually go to the solid view. And the reason we want to do that before we actually render anything is because you're, if you're in the rendered view, your computer is actually going to be using resources to get this rendered view right here inside of Blender. And so what will happen is if you come up here and render the animation, it'll actually render the animation and this in the background and uh, it'll auto update. It'll just eat up computer resources. And so we want to go ahead and go to, I usually just stick to solid view, uh, but you can also do, I believe wireframe is another uh, kind of simpler, um, you know, view in order to not use as many resources. Uh, but now that we're in this view, let's go ahead and just render a uh, image right here and see what our render time is. Okay, so as you can see, one frame only took 36 seconds, which is actually pretty decently fast for a scene like this, a uh, full CG scene. And so I'm pretty happy with that. Hopefully you guys were able to do some tests on your own end or learn a thing or two to apply to your own work. I'm telling you, as soon as you guys can optimize and uh, put the right settings for your render settings, you will literally cut render times in half than you're normally used to. Anyways, I just want to let you guys know that I do have a couple of courses now out uh, with Blender, one where it goes from beginner to pro with everything Blender visual effects, and then another one that specifically goes over visual effects advertising using Blender and After Effects. So definitely go ahead and check those out. Links will be down below. But anyways, thank you so, so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.